Johnny Carson was arguably the best and most beloved American talk show host of all time. His unique brand of observational humor and snarky wittiness, combined with his cordial demeanor, resonated with audiences and critics alike. But Johnny Carson's life was a lot more eventful and intriguing than a lot of people realize. He had a persona his fans expected to see, and it's not abnormal for stars to be different from the characters they play on TV. That same principle applies even to celebrities who become famous for portraying themselves. Join Facts First as we take a look at the real Johnny Carson, the man he was when he wasn't hosting his hit program, The Tonight Show. Johnny Carson's childhood was fairly mundane. John William Carson came into the world October 23, 1925. He was born in Corning, Iowa, to parents Ruth Elizabeth Carson and Homer Lloyd Kit Carson. His mother was a typical homemaker, while his father worked as a manager for a local power company. Later on, it came to light that Johnny Carson wrestled with very active personal demons. He was notorious for being a heavy drinker, philanderer, and for having a short temper. In his adult life, these issues caused him serious problems, both in his personal and professional life. Although she no doubt did the best she could, Johnny blamed his domineering mother for some of his troubles. He once referred to his mother Ruth as Lady Macbeth, the toughest of them all. And his relationship with her was apparently quite toxic. They were on such bad terms that reportedly when she passed away, he didn't attend her funeral and quipped that the Wicked Witch was finally dead. Little Johnny grew up in the somewhat remote towns of Avoca, Red Oak, and Clarinda in southwest Iowa before his family relocated to Norfolk, Nebraska when he was eight. While there, he grew up discovering his passion for entertaining others. When he was 12, Johnny discovered a book on magic and sleight of hand at one of his friend's houses and proceeded to buy a magician's kit through the mail. After receiving his kit, he began honing his entertainment skills by performing simple card tricks for his family members. His shtick was to follow his siblings and parents around and ask them to pick a card, any card. Even though he would later come to resent her, Johnny's mother wanted to support her son and encourage him to follow his passions. So she sewed him a cape. His first performance was at the local Kiwanis Club, where he made his debut as the great Carsoni at age 14. From there, he went on to refine his routine, performing at local picnics and county fairs. Once he graduated from high school, he hitchhiked to Hollywood, where he was subsequently arrested and ordered to pay a fine for illegally impersonating a midshipman, although this tale has been called into question over the years. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse for more and stick around for a lot more about Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson joined the military before scoring his big break. During World War II, Johnny enlisted in the Navy. While he was in the service, he engaged in regular amateur boxing tournaments and apparently was quite good at the sport. When he was in the Navy, he had a 10-0 record and participated in the most fights fought on board the USS Pennsylvania. But even though he was a capable and gifted fighter, he still retained his passion for stage magic. One of the highlights of his military career, or at least the one he said was most significant to him, was the time he performed magic for the United States Secretary of the Navy, James V. Forrestal. When the secretary asked him if he planned on staying in the Navy after the war, Johnny responded by saying he didn't plan on it and instead wanted to be a professional magician. After performing for the tough-as-nails, no-nonsense military career man, that's when Johnny realized he had the ability to entertain someone as crotchety and sophisticated as Forrestal reportedly was. When the war ended, Johnny dedicated himself to pursuing a career in entertainment by studying journalism at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln with the intention of one day becoming a comedy writer, but later he switched his major to speech and drama to instead take a stab at being a radio announcer. Even though he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in radio and speech, he eventually moved away from radio and transitioned to television. After many twists and turns, Johnny took over as host of the late-night talk show Tonight. Previously, that show was helmed by Jack Parr. While the show was already fairly successful by the end of the 60s, Carson became a bona fide American icon during the 70s and retained that status even after retiring in 92. Johnny's casual yet conversational approach with his star-studded guests was unparalleled. He's seen even now as the reigning king of late-night TV, and it's undeniable he influenced hosts that have taken the helm of his and other similarly-themed shows. Johnny Carson kept much of his personal life private. 
Johnny was many different things. Not only was he a comedian and wildly successful talk show host, he was also a father of three, as well as a three-time divorcee. But even though he lived his life perpetually in the limelight, he rarely let the public know the details of his family life. He was a deeply private man, and the on-screen version of himself was pretty much the only one his fans got to see. Johnny was very careful to keep his private life carefully under wraps, and his friends, lawyers, and fixers also assisted him in keeping details of his life out of the tabloids. But there was always much speculation he was a much darker person than the one we got to see on TV. While most people saw Johnny as a kind, loving Midwestern boy who was gifted at taking command of the stage, others argued he was shy, deeply insecure, cold, and calloused. In truth, he was all these things, the good with the bad. It wasn't exactly a secret how Johnny would treat his guests between commercial breaks. He was often called cold-hearted by those who had the opportunity to sit down and chat with him on his popular show. It was said he would often lose his cool over small things, and many suspected his relationship with alcohol is what contributed to his volatile mood swings. Johnny Carson was a very nervous and awkward man off-screen. Even though Johnny effortlessly made small talk with his guests on The Tonight Show, he could be very anxious and socially awkward in real life. Despite being known as a suave debonair on screen, when the cameras weren't rolling, he struggled to make conversation. To ease the tension, it's said he would carry a deck of cards with him and do magic tricks when he was anxious. One of his fellow TV hosts, Dick Cavett, even said he felt sorry for Johnny because of how socially uncomfortable he was. Johnny Carson's love life was tumultuous. Johnny had a pretty lousy reputation of treating people who annoyed him fairly poorly. Apparently, it wasn't very difficult to wind up on his bad side either. One person who did was Johnny's fourth wife, Alexis Moss, who put up with constant public humiliation when she'd say something that would irk her husband when they were on her honeymoon. The two spent the honeymoon in Italy in 1987. By all accounts, it was a pretty miserable affair because even though they were traveling on Johnny's luxury yacht, his mood quickly degraded. Reportedly, when Moss made a fairly innocuous comment that annoyed her new husband, he shot back at her, commenting that even though they'd been married for only three weeks, if she were to say something like that again, their union wouldn't last another three. The two actually remained married until Johnny's death in 2005. Since then, however, Moss has remained out of the spotlight, and it's unknown whether she dated anyone else since Johnny. But even though Johnny's fourth marriage endured for many years, his previous marriages shined a bit of light on his character. When in the midst of divorce proceedings with his second wife, Joanne Copeland, it was revealed Johnny's alcoholism was at the heart of their marital troubles. It was also revealed Johnny was deeply insecure and routinely suspected Copeland of cheating on him. When it was discovered Copeland had a secret apartment where she was engaging in a clandestine affair with another man, Johnny's dark side came out in a disturbing way. Not only did he raid Copeland's apartment without her consent, but he also fell into a downward spiral of alcoholism, self-hatred, and depression that was nearly impossible to keep a secret. The fallout from this chapter would lead to him having a deep distrust for anyone, especially women. Now it's time to hear from you. Were you surprised to learn about the dark side of Johnny Carson? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.